We just heard from our Eamon Javers earlier this hour, the White House announcing much more narrow than expected a set of proposed rules around investment in China. In an executive order, the president will direct Treasury to propose new rules regulating U.S. investment in some technology sectors. So let's bring in Strategy Risks CEO Isaac Stonefish. Isaac, it's great to have you on the show. I do want to get your reaction to this, especially since it does seem like it's very specific very targeted technologies like quantum or uh, technologies tied to AI, for example, where there are very real, very uh, not, not only not like very um, uh, military applications, real time military applications, and thus the national security risks associated with this. Is, is this what you anticipated or does it speak to the fact that there had been much wider ranging, bigger, broader uh, sweeping investments policies that just couldn't get across the finish line, and, and, and this is where we've gotten. There will be some Congress people who are quite disappointed to see the narrow aperture here. What I will say, though, is even though the order is pretty restricted, the Chinese military is quite broad. Uh, China is a very different military than the United States. It's an arm of the Chinese Communist Party. So actually removing oneself from a military investment is a lot more difficult than it sounds. Okay. So does this executive order, as it stands or as it's proposed right now, does it actually mitigate that in terms of tech investment from the U.S.? So with sanctions, which this is somewhat similar to, uh, banks, insurers, investors tend to be overcautious and stay far away from any sanction entity. It's still too early to say if investors are going to say, well, let me err on the side of caution, or if they're going to have a more aggressive strategy. And I think early enforcement actions against people who violate or seem to violate this order will play a really big part in changing investor behavior. Okay. What, what could some of those changes of investor behavior actually in, entail? I'm just wondering if there's unintended consequences or there's potential beneficiaries tied to this. So unintended consequences are making it more difficult to partner with Chinese state-owned enterprises. A Bank of China, ICBC, companies like that are part of the party state, and we may see them being less attractive as an investment or a partnership destination. We also might see some big investment companies, you know, the Black Rocks and Vanguards of the world, being a little bit more hesitant when they decide to allow investors to allocate capital towards certain sensitive Chinese entities. But your early question is right. I think this is a lot less than a lot of people were expecting and hoping. So maybe it's not the, the broad decoupling that had been initially anticipated, but does this increase the geopolitical risk premium of investing in China in general? It depends what your base case was. Um, if, if you're coming at this from two years ago, absolutely. But this week to next week, because this is probably milder than people was expecting, I don't think this really changes things. Okay. And we know the Biden administration has been walking a tightrope uh, in terms of at least optically looking to ease some of the tensions and increase some of the lines of communication with China in, in recent months. Does this undo that uh, process or is this something that because it is so narrow in scope, it, it continues to forge ahead with that policy and thus maybe not be going back to this uh, risk premium, not not be something that is an un unintended consequence for global companies that are that, that operate in China? Optically, yes. Actually, though, the Biden administration does want to contain China, and they're facing a lot of pushback from the business community. It's fascinating to watch the difference between where average Americans are on China. I think a recent poll saw half of them see China as the greatest threat that America faces, and so many people in the business community who want this to be business as usual. And the Biden administration is caught among... Main Street, Wall Street, and the Republicans, uh, many of which, especially those who aren't supportive of Trump, would really like to see for much more decoupling between the United States and China. So I think a lot of them in their heart of hearts understand that investing in China poses a great risk to America, especially as tensions rise over Taiwan and elsewhere. But they're, they're walking in the middle as much as they can.